the appropriate resolution of the nature-nurture controversy is that it's always both genetic inheritance and learning or environment that influence the development of behavior. So asking if the development of behavior is the result of genetic inheritance or if it's the result of environment is a very naive way to word that question. Instead, what we want to ask is, how can we study the relative effects of genotype or genetic inheritance and environment on the development of behavior? Not assuming that it's one or the other, it's always both. But we can study how much each one of those influences the development of behavior. And to illustrate how this might be done, I'm going to present you with an experiment conducted years ago that I love just because it was botched. <laughs> this was a, an experiment that turned out to have some serious problems, but it's a good illustration here. The researcher wanted to study the relative effects of environment and genetic inheritance on intelligence in rats. So he ran a large group of rats through a maze and he identified the number of errors that each rat made. Rats made many errors, other rats made few errors, but the vast majority made a medium number of errors. Then the researcher used selective breeding. He bred the rats that made few errors with each other. He bred the rats that made many errors with each other and omitted the rats who made medium numbers of errors from the experiment. After a few generations of selective breeding, this is what the researcher saw. Looking at the frequency distribution on the right, you're now seeing a bimodal distribution. Think back to that word mode. It was a measure of central tendency, the most frequently occurring score. We're no longer looking at a normal curve or a bell-shaped curve. We're seeing a dip in the middle of it. The selective breeding is causing there to be fewer rats that make a medium number of errors and essentially we're seeing peaks related to the number of rats, frequency of rats that have few errors or high numbers of errors. We've gone from a normal distribution to a bimodal distribution and in the bimodal distribution there are two modes or two most frequently occurring scores. The researcher continued the experiment selectively breeding rats that made many errors with other rats who made many errors and also breeding rats that made few errors with other rats that made few errors. And over more generations of selective breeding, here's what he saw. He obtained two distinct populations of rats. One he called maize bright rats because they made few errors in a maze and others that he called maize dull because they made many errors in the maze. And so this researcher concluded that intelligence is strongly genetically inherited. But there's a problem with this experiment. Other researchers replicated this study and they found similar results, but they extended it. They went on and tested these maize bright and maize dull rats in other shapes of mazes. And the maize bright rats were no longer maize bright and the maize dull rats were no longer maize dull. Testing them in different kinds of intelligence tests would suggest that they were bred just to be good or bad at running through a particular shape of maze. In my view, this represents a very narrow view of intelligence. And as we talk about intelligence later in the course, what you'll see is that over time, historically, our definition of intelligence has been getting broader and broader. And I think this is an example of the most narrow view of intelligence that I've encountered. Still other researchers replicated this experiment, but they also manipulated the environment in which the rats were raised. Some of the maize bright and maize dull rats were raised in normal rat laboratory environments. Not much going on, but there are other rats in cages nearby, and you periodically get handled by one of the researchers. Some of the maize bright rats and some of the maize dull rats were raised in enriched environments where they had lots of toys to play with, things happening in their little rat laboratory. They were handled often and socialized. Essentially, they were raised in what was an enriched environment, if you're a laboratory rat. Still others of the maize bright and maize dull rats were raised in restricted environments, where they couldn't see any other rats, nothing ever happened, they had no toys to play with, and they were rarely handled. And what these researchers found was that when you manipulate the environment like this, maize bright rats are no longer maize bright and maize dull rats are no longer maize dull. The maize bright rats seem to have reduced quote intellectual abilities 
while the maze dull rats appeared to have increased, quote, intellectual abilities. So once again, it's always both nature and nurture, both genetic inheritance and environment that play a role in the development of any behavior.